Hi folks, it's Patricia from uh, East Marsh Acres and today what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make some sauerkraut. Now I've done this before, it has turned out, I forget what recipe I used, um, but anyways I'm going to um, um, try to make some sauerkraut. This is from some of the um, cabbage that we grew on our garden. <coughs> now I started using the food processor to cut up the cabbage and this is kind of how it turned out very very fine and I don't think I want that for my for my sauerkraut. I'm going to actually try it in um, in its own jar and see how that works. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is use a grater and see how that works in cutting up my my um, cabbage. So what um, is very simple for this uh, we grate up the cabbage and we get five pounds of cabbage that's why I've got the weight the scale there and three tablespoons of sea salt and you let that sit for about a half an hour so that the juices can start to like it the salt pulls the um, the salt pulls the uh, water out of the cabbage and so that's the brine that is starting to get uh, made. So what we want is we want fermented sauerkraut so it means sour cabbage basically is what sauerkraut means and so we're going to let that sit and then we're going to put it into jars and we're going to let that sit for three to six weeks in its brine. We're going to check it all the time uh, make sure, <clears throat> well, it can get mold because it's fermenting, but we take that off and we take it off, take it off. And so then by the end of it, we'll get some sauerkraut and then we'll can that uh, for the winter. So here I'm going to try to um, to grate it and see what the size is. Otherwise, I'm going to cut it really finely with a knife. So I'm going to set you up over here. We can see how the grating process goes. Come around here. You think someone's here, Shelby? No, no one's here. Okay. Okay, this is not going to work for me. It is almost as fine as the food processor. So, next thing. So again, that's that's pretty fine. It's got some big parts to it, but otherwise, I'm going to put it in my fine dish. Okay, next thing. And I think that's what I did before is just cutting it up. Because I don't know about you, but I like to, I don't know, have my sauerkraut. Um, so, yeah, that's sort of how I want it. You know, so it's, it's sort of fine, but, you know, it's got some substance still. So when you're putting it on your sausages and so on, that it, um, yeah, it's not just really, because otherwise it'll get really wet and really fine. I, I don't know, I like a little bit more substance to it. So, unfortunately it's going to take a little bit longer to do that. Um, so, anyways, this is... So, coring the cabbage, cutting the cabbage, I took the outer leaves off. Now I'm going to save some of the save some of the outer leaves like this because they're going to go on top of the um, while it's fermenting they're going to go on top 
as you can see, um, I'm actually saving some of it in the chicken bowl. They love cabbage. So, so we want to take the core out of the cabbage. So that's sort of what I'm doing here. And the chickens get that. So I don't get any other spots and whatever. So I'm just going to take it and do it really fine cutting. Okay, zero it off and start putting it in. And it's going to be a while before I get five pounds, that's for sure. Some of the larger pieces, maybe I'll cut up a little bit more. So this is only like a half a pound. So I may not even get to the five pounds. So I'll have to half the recipe, I guess. And we'll Anyways, you can see how I'm cutting it. I'm going to let you I'll come back later, you can see how I've cut it all up. Um, this is kind of boring for you, so talk to you in a minute. Hi, I'm back again. So I have cut up a lot of cabbage. Well, not as much as the recipe. So this, I did two and a half pounds, and this is another one and a quarter, so we're looking at three pounds and 11 ounces. We're looking at almost like four pounds. So if I divide the recipe, um, um, three tablespoons of sea, sea salt. So this is my sea salt. So, I'm going to put about two tablespoons, two and a half tablespoons. I don't think it matters too much if we do too much. So, so here's our bowl of cabbage. Two, two and a half. Okay, so now I'm just going to massage that salt through. much is going through this but we'll see it already feels kind of softer but 
I don't know if I'd have a bowl big enough for five pounds. But this is all the cabbage I have. Oh, that's not true. I've got one huge one still in the garden. So I'm going to keep that. And I think I'll keep it in the fridge for some, some fall recipes over the fall time. I have a nice casserole that's sort of like cabbage rolls. And uh, okay, so I think that that is mixed up. I'm going to put those leaves that I saved as well on top and cover it with cover it with a cloth. And I'm going to leave it there for about said about 30 minutes. Oh yeah, and then my little uh, fine stuff. I'm just going to put maybe a half a tablespoon. It's probably more than enough and mix it in. And set that aside as well. Okay. So, um, I'll see you in a half an hour and we'll see how this looks. Oh, welcome back. Um, yeah, my sauerkraut is been sitting for oh, probably half a day and it's softened up but it hasn't really produced any brine. So in order for me to get it to ferment I have to make some brine. So that's what I'm doing right now. Um, just need some boiling water and some so a quart of boiling water and one and a half tablespoons of pickling salt. So that's what's in there. But so this was the soft, uh, the smaller pieces, like the ones that I did in the food processor and the grater. Um, so yeah, that's how they turned out. And they started to go brown because they're starting to ferment. Okay. Um, anyways, I'm going to put start putting in the put these in so i decided to use some actual sauerkraut jars that i had because i've got these larger wide mouth um jars but i've only got one of the rings so that's really not going to work very well um so what I'm doing now is I'm putting it in and you kind of have to stamp it all down. You want to get it in there pretty tight. So that's why I don't even know if I'll have enough. I'll probably do another, maybe another small jar. bit more in and then I think I'll have room for the brine on the top. Now I wish I had some weights that I could fit in this jar. So I have some weights or some glass things but they don't fit in these jars. They'll fit in the larger jar but not into that one. So okay. Um, Here's the brine. Take this. I think that's probably all I'll need. So just press it down, get all the bubbles out.
but you want the cabbage to be able to stay under the grind. That way it will ferment and not get, I think, probably too brown. It'll stay the nice color. Okay. So I think that's as much as I'm going to put. Now they say to put on some of the, the leaves on it to kind of cover it up. So, so the, the actual sauerkraut is below the water but this, these leaves are kind of above the water. So if any mold's gonna form, they'll form on the leaves themselves. So I'm just going to do that and <clears throat> get the next one. just thought about it. I don't know how well that's going to work with... I can't really can this stuff because the jars don't have the right lids unless... You know, I don't think the wide mouth fit on there. They don't. Um, So most of the jars that it came in with. I'm only going to have enough for this one rather than the large one. So we'll go with that. Anything left over, I can then put in a small jar. jars of this, which is fine. It's probably about what I'd go through in the winter. I mean, we just have it mostly with sausages, so don't have them 
too often. Some brown bits in case. Now let you keep it under the water, under the brine, and let's do that one. One here. I have to put some brine in this one. So there we go. We've got three jars of sauerkraut. So, yeah. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, well, three and a half jars of sauerkraut. So, um, we will be tasting it over the next... Um, yeah, you, you have to keep an eye on it for the next uh, little while. So, probably every few days, I'll probably make sure that it's under the water, give it a little taste, and um, <clears throat> well I won't have to taste just make sure it's under the water then after about three weeks I'll taste it to see if it's at the at the acidity level or the sauerkrautness that I want so these are going to go into the cold storage and uh, that's where I will keep them to ferment so um, I'll give you an update um, down the road and uh, thanks for watching and we will see you soon with the next um, produce uh, yeah, video that I do. So, although there's not too much left in the garden, but um, I'll keep you updated with ha what happens at our kitchen in East Marsh Acres. So, take care.